What's going on, family? You are now listening to the Fitness Headspace Podcast, brought to you by Evolve Fitness, where we get fit and we don't quit, hosted by none other than Dion Avril. And what I'd like to do first and foremost is thank everyone for just tapping in with us. If you wouldn't mind just sharing, liking, subscribing, go ahead and comment down below. We can go ahead and get these conversations started. So just to give you a little insight in regards to what's going on right now, um, first and foremost, we just received uh, some some beautiful uh, designs back for our merch. So we're going to be looking at those after we finish our podcast. Um, along with that, we're still working on different programs. So we had mentioned that we're going to be working on programs for individuals that actually want to get into the gym that might not have the full understanding of how to create a full workout plan how to set up their sets, reps, or even knowing how to do the exercise themselves. So again, we're going to be bringing you guys a lot in the future. So just be very, very patient and be ready. All right, y'all. So for today's topic, what I wanted to touch on is primarily mental health. And when it comes to mental health, specifically burning out and depression. So on this channel, I've already put up, it's kind of like an 11 minute video that kind of bounces around the ideal. Um, But what I really wanted to do was give you all a personal experience. It's still it's still almost the same, but I wanted to give you a personal experience and then also walk you through um, how I was able to get out of the funk, because I think it's really important to have an uh, understanding of what went down, especially from somebody else's perspective and somebody that tends to seem like they always have it together. You know what I mean? You ever had that one person that you know that could be a friend that's always smiling and always in high spirits, but you not knowing what's going on in the back end, they might actually be hurting. Um, but again, it's just one of those things where you, if you didn't know, you wouldn't know. It's just that that person does a really good job with hiding it. Um, and that, that's me. You know, that was my situation about two, two and a half weeks ago. So let's start from the top. So basically what ended up happening was the the whole thing had started when basically when I couldn't uh, upload the podcast for like the last week, week and a half uh, due to technical issues and all this craziness going on. So fast forward. Well, I should say rewind, actually. Um, what really triggered that was the fact of not having anything together, not having my stuff together. And you're probably wondering, what do you mean? So what I mean by that is. Remember that I told you all that I was working with a website uh, developer that was helping the team put together what we have and so we could roll it out. But what ended up happening was I hired this uh, this individual and the person just literally disappeared. Like I've never seen this ever in my life. I tried to message this person back um, because I had found them through somewhere and that person was non-existent anymore. So I had to go through delegation and get a partial refund so then I could um, you know, take that uh, that those finances and reinvest into another web developer. So basically, we went from spending two hundred and fifty dollars to what is it two, um, two three about four hundred bucks now. You know, so I always like to tell people sometimes going the shortcut way doesn't mean that it's a better way. Um, and you know, just the like for example, if I would have just paid the four hundred dollars up front, this would have never been an issue. And not saying that the money was an issue is just the fact of trying to budget and find, um, you know, the best bang for the buck with great, you know, uh, great feedback, uh, great profile, like um, like a portfolio. Sorry, a great portfolio and just people that gave, you know, great reviews on this individual. So basically it, it went on back and forth with this person and essentially the person didn't do their job. Anybody that knows me is knows that I'm very detailed when it comes to instructions, especially if I'm asking somebody to do something and I'm paying them to do it, whether it's paid or not. Um, It's the same way with uh, fitness as well, too. If I need to elaborate on something as far as your form or whatever the case is, I'll try to dive in without being super confusing, but keeping it in general terms. So now when we fast forward, what ended up happening with this individual, like I told you, off the face of the earth. So now we were left with a half finished product. So now with this half finished product did to to me personally, um, you know, I'm a Capricorn. So I'm to an extent, I'm a perfectionist. We were hard workers. We're go, go, go. Like that's what we do. So 
I wanted to take on the challenge and I wanted to try to finish what I could before we released it. Now, this is what happened. Right after that, I ended up stop. I well, not ended up stop. I stopped utilizing my daily schedule in a sense of I was like, you know what? Let me just wing it. I don't have nothing crazy going on right now. Let me just focus on the website and we'll be good until I started working on the website. I didn't realize how much I had up front of me, like what I like. I bit. I felt like I bit off too much. But fast forward, I didn't to an extent. So. As all this is going on, I was looking, losing track of time. So I would be sitting in my chair, um, weekdays, weekends, uh, like just endlessly, just always working on something. Um, there was no end to it. So for me, like I felt like I was getting things done, but at the same time, I was being counterproductive because the things that I were doing were so minimal. It it really didn't even matter because the site wasn't even up. So I had again, I had no structure i had no foundation we spoke about foundation before family you know what i mean so foundation will always be key now with that being said it's it was one of those things where it was a slight pride it was a slight ego it wasn't really ego it was more pride i would say it's like nah i got this i got this like you know um and i didn't know when to stop so it threw me into this whole of feeling like I have this big project that I can't complete on top of that. I was doing social media uh, posts and planning and marketing and editing and doing my own program design, clients program design, having to follow up with other things as well too. following up with um, the the uh, the gentleman that we have right now on the team that's doing um, graphic design for our merch, it was just a whole bunch. And that gentleman's actually out in Pakistan. So it's not even like a, you know what I mean? So there was a lot of moving parts, as I always say, that was going on around me. And I didn't realize what was going on. So here we go. We're getting into the the nitty gritty now. So as all this is going on, here's some of the signs that I had noticed. And this is where the, the signs of burnout that I want you guys to pay attention to guys and gals. Um, the first thing that I had saw was like, I was so hyper-focused, like so zoned in. It wasn't even funny. It was, it was actually kind of scary after a couple of days. And not only that, it was euphoric in a way, but then what ended up happening was I got sick to my stomach. Um, I wasn't eating restless, um, stressed out in a way, but I didn't, I didn't acknowledge it or identify it as stress because I'm so used to moving around and doing so much stuff. And I'm so good at handling multiple things at one time. And it's not in the sense of multitasking. I'm just saying like just having a busy day in general. But remember, like I told you, I've always had a schedule. I've always had things planned out, which always works for me. Again, uh, most Capricorns are that way. Not every Capricorn, but a good chunk of you know Capricorns are very methodic. We're very logical. We we think things out. We we're very analytical, um, which makes things a little bit easier for us when when it comes to doing certain tasks. So because of the field that I'm in, logic and and planning and structure was everything, and I threw that out of the window solely on the fact of I had one project that I really wanted to focus on and I felt disrespected because somebody just left me with a half ass project and I felt some type of way. I'm not going to lie to anybody. I felt some type of way. So feeling this way ended up causing me to ignore everything else within my body, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally. When I tell you everything, everything. And it threw me into this hole of depression because here's another thing, right? If you ever notice people in Alaska, people in uh, certain northern states who tend to have snow um, all the time. And for example, Washington state are known as the gloomy states. And the most uh, those are usually the states with the most depression. And the reason being is because people aren't getting vitamin D. There is no sun. So me locking locking myself in the in the house um, and not sunbathing. And that's just a personal thing that I do. And just sitting into the sun and, and just. You know, getting getting that vitamin D, but just feeling that energy from the sun itself for me personally is what works. So that was something that I had to incorporate as well. Now, 
those are some of the signs of burnout, like I said, and that was kind of like my story in a sense. Now, when it comes to the when it comes to the depression, it's kind of the same. It goes hand in hand, right? Because you tend to stress out. You feel like you're inadequate. You feel like what you're doing doesn't even matter. You feel like um, the things that you do, for example, like I would get so much stuff done. I'd be like, eh. <laughs> like that was that was really how it was. Um, I was like, man, I could have done more. Or I'm like, ah, I guess whatever. Um, but it got to a point to where, like, I didn't even feel like going to the gym. And any of my clients that's listening to this, this is nothing against you. I didn't feel like training anyone. And it wasn't their fault. I was just in this mood of, like, everything I'm doing, I feel like it has no purpose at this point in time. And that was because I disconnected with myself as far as aligning my goals and reminding myself with what my purpose is in regards to everything that we're doing right now. So what I ended up having to do was I ended up talking to a couple of people and just expressing myself. And as I'm doing that, they gave me the opportunity to self-reflect because I'm very analytical. So then I could tell myself that although I had friends around me that were telling me, hey, you're not eating or I had people around me that told me that, hey, you know, you're on the computer all the time. Like, when are you going to get off the computer? Or I would literally see myself on the computer for four, five, six hours not four or five like consecutive, but like getting up a little bit, go eat, come back, getting up a little bit, whatever, come back. So it was one of those things where it became toxic. And I had to remind myself that although I want this project done, just because I'm working on it 24 seven doesn't mean I'm gonna get it done. And the main thing that I noticed was the fact that I was actually getting things done, but there wasn't a lot of progress. So what I ended up having to do after I had these conversations with friends And this is why it's really important if you do have the opportunity to have a support system. And if you do not, this is why you have to find it within yourself as well, too, um, to really dig deep and figure out um, what's going on and how can you resolve this. So the way that I ended up doing it was after I, you know, self-reflected, figured out what was going on. And, you know, another way you guys can do it is meditate. If you're if you know about meditation, you can do it that way. If you're not familiar with it. Try a guided meditation. You could come on YouTube, uh, find just type in 10 minute uh, guided meditation and start with that. Focus on your breathing and trying to quiet your mind while it's racing. You know what I'm saying? That's really what you want to focus on. Now, besides that, I also took the opportunity to pardon me. Um, I took the opportunity to focus on getting back to my schedule. And I kid you guys not, the day that I actually put my schedule together and the following day after, bounce back 180, no problems. I went, I immediately went back into the sun every morning, um, or I should say every, every, every day. Um, Trying to get rid of that word, y'all, because you shouldn't be using that word, especially in the early day. Um, But anyway, that's that's a personal opinion. Don't worry about what I'm saying about that Um, to get back on track. So. Like I said, I think I think what's really important with identifying that, well, the signs of burnout and depression was the fact of the matter of really just sitting down with myself, realizing what's causing what what am I feeling first? And once I figure out what I'm feeling, anxiety, depression, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, what's causing that? What exactly around me? What in my environment is really causing these feelings or these emotions so once i identified that then i figured out okay now that i know what's causing it what about it is causing it so if it's the website what about the website the fact that it's not done okay cool so how can you resolve that instead of me working on it 24 7 how about you create a schedule so what i did was for seven days um i split it up into seven days and for those seven days i basically had a a a decent amount of tasks to do on the website for the seven days and it actually worked out more efficiently for me because it wasn't like my mind was all over the place like okay i got a huge list instead of decompartmentalizing and breaking it up into several days um i ended up just trying to hit it all in one cold turkey and you all have to remember now i have no uh um no experience as far as web development and website design and, and all of that stuff. So all that stuff I had to learn. So imagine trying to hit a deadline. Well, getting basically getting dropped, 
having to hit a deadline and on top of that having to learn what you don't know until you can actually find the other person because I couldn't hire them immediately because I still was going through um, you know the whole uh, process with the um, the third party company so there was that so I was like I'm not going to just shell out money if you guys are going to give me a refund I'll just wait to get the refund and then reallocate it back to somebody else you know what I mean so again you have to be smart with your finances um, and not just think in the moment you know in the spur of the moment and just being hot headed and be like man F that I'm going to just go ahead and slide and go pay somebody else and drawu. no for what bro just take a minute take a minute identify clarify what needs to be done well, once you have clarity in regards to what needs to be done, then it makes the whole process a lot easier. That's what we need to focus on. You get what I'm saying? So I know I'm going to sound like a, a, a broken record, but I just want to make sure that I'm very clear with what I'm saying. With whatever you have going on right now, you need to take a back seat, reflect, go go inside. OK, stop looking externally, go internally and focus on what's causing those issues. Once you figure out what's causing those issues, get more clarity in regards to what about those issues are giving you anxiety. Now, once you figure out more clarity in regards to that, start creating a plan around those specific things or stress factors or anxiety factors or whatever you want to call them. And then what you want to do is create a plan to where you can manage them. And as you're managing them, you can start improving on certain things little by little. Then from there, that's where you'll come out of that that funk. Because again, everything that you feel right now is temporary. And here's another thing that I heard. Um, basically, utilize this time in this manner, right? Think about it like this. This is a lesson that you're learning that's trying to teach you something, I should say. That's within a certain season, right? So you have lessons, which is a shorter amount of time. You have seasons, which is going to be a larger amount of time. And then you have, of course, a lifetime. So you are being taught a lesson throughout a certain season so that moving forward, you can utilize this experience and information to better the rest of your life. You get what I'm saying? Or lifetime. So you can see how the whole analogy flows together. So it's all about flow and just slowing down and taking the time to just reflect. And anytime you get that anxiety, just making sure that you focus on taking that deep breath or finding finding a hobby or something that puts you at ease. So for me, as weird as this might sound, um, I'm actually starting next week. I'm going to head back over to Barnes and Nobles and people are like Barnes and no- yeah that's just my safe space like I feel comfortable around knowledge like think about that knowledge is power y'all stop playing get yourself around get yourself around something that you're comfortable with for some people it's going to the beach for me for example I like going into nature like putting my feet into the ground and, and actually grounding myself and just being one with nature and that's the beach as well too to an extent um but again, there's just a difference for some people. Whatever it is, figure it out. Figure out what works for you and implement it. And don't be afraid to try new things. You get what I'm saying? Because that's another thing. And, and one thing that I noticed was you tend to start incorporating these new things into your daily routine and it becomes a habit. And then again, these are new skills that you can incorporate into your lifestyle to help you become more efficient in whatever it is that you're doing. Or just to be, just to feel better in general. It doesn't have to be anything specific. You get what I'm saying? So ultimately, like I said, y'all, this is just something that was really sitting on my chest. And it was just something that I felt like, you know, people aren't vulnerable enough, especially being like, you know, a coach and and training people. A lot of people don't hear this stuff from their coaches. So for me to be open and vulnerable, this, I have no problem with it. Like I'm so, I'm so comfortable with my emotions and my femininity. Um, it's not even that big of a deal. Sorry, I had a little tongue twister there, but it's not that big of a deal for me. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, for example, as a male, I'm okay with showing my emotions and crying around a female. That doesn't mean anything to me. Even if I'm around men, it doesn't mean anything to me because what that does is it helps me realize and identify what's going on. Because if y'all think about it, women have some of the best intuition ever. 
because they're so in tune with themselves on their feminine side. Guys, we're so masculine, we're so logical, we're just thinking one way, one way, one way, but then we don't know how to be sensitive to our woman or just in general to be open-minded and open-hearted. So this is one of the things that I had to learn throughout this time was tapping in into my feminine side because we all have the yin and yang. You get what I'm saying? So that's why you might have some females that are more uh, masculine and dominant where you have some men that are more you know feminine as well too and and submissive and it's nothing against anyone i'm not i'm not you know saying anything negative i'm just saying this is what you'll see so for me i was able to figure this out and i've always been in tune with my emotions but these last two weeks y'all when i tell you it was real it was real so i just want this to be a perfect example of somebody that you know or somebody that you can see what's going on around them but having the the you know the kahunas that really tell you straight up like bro this is this is really what it be like sometimes it's not always going to be positive there's going to be times where you go through these these little rough patches but these rough patches are literally testing you to make sure that you are in a position where you're ready to transition and, and actually incorporate these new things or these um <clears throat> these things or these experiences that you're learning into your everyday life so for example if it happens and you're not ready it's going to keep happening until you figure out your strengths and how to incorporate your strengths into your weaknesses to help you evolve plug y'all know i was going to do that so that's that's kind of the concept of what i had in my head um in regards to when things are happening to you and you don't know why the same things keep happening it's because you're going through the same cycle without realizing that there's something for you to learn and until you learn it it's going to keep happening it's inevitable you know what i'm saying so um, like I said, I don't really want to drag this on. That was that was basically the whole insight in regards to some of the things to look out for when it comes to burning out and depression and just realizing that your mental health is really important, y'all. Stop playing with that. Stop playing with your mental health. Seriously, stop playing with it. If you need to go talk to somebody, talk to somebody. Um, and my thing is, is, you know, a therapist or whoever you need to, because that's what they're here for. Or even a significant other, a friend, somebody. Sometimes it's not even them saying something back to you. It's just them listening and giving you the opportunity to just speak how you feel to help you again identify what needs improvement. All right, y'all. So ultimately, that's basically going to be this episode 19. We'll be back next week with episode 20. We're officially in the 20s, y'all. Hey, hey, hey. Anyway, so. Y'all know what time it is. It's Evolve Fitness where we get fit and we don't quit. And we are looking forward to continuously helping motivate people, helping people get a different perspective when it comes to their mental health, along with their physical fitness aspect and putting them both together. So just remember, you need to have a strong mind before you can just have a strong body. It's all mental first.